Well, stop, great God, let me tell you the news. My head got wet in the midnight dew. I've been down low. Hi, everyone. I am Stephanie Reed with Stephanie Reed Real Estate, and this is the Voices and Views, and we celebrate people and places that make our area wonderful. And today, I'm really excited because I'm here with Jean Liston, who is the executive director of the Hunker Coalition. Thank you, Jean, for coming out here and spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks for, for coming out. We're thrilled to be able to talk about it. Great. Um, so tell us a little bit about the Hunger Coalition first, because I've learned a lot about it this year, and I just, I, it's awesome. That's great. Um, the Hunger Coalition builds community through food, and we believe that everyone deserves healthy food, regardless of their economic circumstances. Mm. So we provide support education, skills training through our Bloom Community Farm here. Mm -hmm. We have the Hope Garden in downtown Haley. We have a Bloom food truck. Uh, we have healthy food pantries and we have several children's food programs. Mm -hmm. And all of these exist with the support of over 400 volunteers. Wow. 400. Yeah. <laughs> Last year we provided food to one in five people in our community and over half of them were children. I was listening to your TEDx that you did Okay. And it was pretty amazing when you said, you know, look to the person to the left of you, look to the person to the right of you. One in three of you have this issue. Right. You it's, know? it's shocking for it most is. people to realize that here in this mm -hmm. very wealthy community we have such mm -hmm. a great need. But as you can imagine, the cost of living is so high, the wages don't match that mm -hmm. cost, and so there's a huge gap. Right. And exactly. we end up um, providing support to... So many people that you would never imagine, many of our friends and families and uh, neighbors have come through our door, yeah. so yeah. that's great. Uh, so we are out here at the Bloom Community Farm, which is one of the things you just mentioned. Right. So, um, and it's something that I've been interested about, and I think it's really great for the community to know what you guys are doing. So can you give us a, a brief of how it started yeah. and what's going on with it Yeah, now? I'd be happy to. So we actually have been dreaming about a farm for many, many years. We started the Hope Garden back in 2010. It's in downtown Haley. It's a 10,000 square foot garden. Um, but we always had dreams of being able to scale up to a farm. And what was really the impetus to make this happen is we uh, spearheaded a community food assessment back in 2015. Mm -hmm. And we did a community survey, a great response to it. 46% mm -hmm. um, of the people responded that no matter how bad it got for them, they would never stand in our emergency food lines. Um, they would be willing to work or volunteer in exchange for food, but they would never come to our, our food pantry. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we didn't actually have a model to accommodate them. So we started doing research. We spent eight months researching other um, communities across the country and found some models, like our Bloom Community Farm, that have worked. So one of the programs that we replicated here was our Volunteer for Veggies program. Mm -hmm. That's where people can literally come get their hands in the dirt, spend an hour volunteering, and take home fresh produce with them. So, you know, those people who were willing to volunteer or work in exchange for food, this is a great avenue for them to do that. Right. Last year was our pilot year. We were hoping to have 25 people show up. We had 229 people come. Oh Clearly there is a huge, <laughs> huge need that for is something amazing. like this. amazing. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It was great to see the response. Um, and we are quickly running out of space for, right. for the new So was right there now. enough food with that many people coming there through? There was. There was. Wow. And we will see what happens this mm -hmm. summer. And mm -hmm. um, you can see uh, outside we're already expanding beyond our fence line right now. We're right. trying to grow some, some crops out there to uh -huh. see if we, they will survive with without the deer and the elk eating them. Right, but, exactly. Um, but yeah, it was it was fabulous to see the community mm -hmm. really embrace what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, another one of our programs that we're able to base out of the farm is our Bloom Youth Project. Yes, that's what I wanted you to yes, talk about. I near and dear so to great. our hearts. Um, that is where we are taking um, youth ages 14 to 16, mm -hmm. and we are hiring them for a seven-month internship. Um, they are learning job and life skills. and um, in the summer months, now that they're out of school, they are working every morning here on the farm. They're learning how to plant, how to grow, how to harvest, how to uh, process, and actually how to sell the food, which I'll talk about mm -hmm. in a minute. Um, but that, So they're learning those growing skills, and then they're learning cooking skills because we have an outdoor kitchen here. So two of the interns get pulled away. They actually prepare a meal for the whole group with the food that they've grown, and then they sit down together, have lunch together, and then in the afternoons they have life skills classes. So they're learning uh, resume building skills, presentation right. skills, financial literacy skills, all those things that are really those core life skills that will hopefully um, help them become very well-rounded adults. 
Okay, Jean, so I want you to tell us about the one other facet of the Bloom program, which is the mobile market. So tell us about that. Okay. Um, we love that program. So the Bloom Youth Project interns have decided um, to help address the issue of people wanting to either work or, or um, pay for food, not come to our emergency food mm -hmm. lines, by creating a discounted mobile market that goes to targeted uh, neighborhoods. So we go to the Summit Apartments in Cary, which mm -hmm. is low-income senior housing and people in disabilities, and we go to the town of Cary, mm -hmm. um, where they lost their grocery store a couple years ago, oh, so that's they right. actually yes. can't purchase their mm -hmm. own pro fresh produce there. And we sell food there, we sell it at uh, very uh, affordable rates, mm -hmm. and the, the kids are the ones who set up the whole thing. So they have researched the cost of food, they have figured out how to market it, um, they they run the whole thing, they sell the mm. food, they count the money, they are responsible for all aspects of it. So wow. it's a wonderful business oppor wow. learning opportunity for them. Right. Too. No, that is so great. And I bet when they go to the grocery store, they probably look at all the pricing of <laughs> yes. everything. You Absolutely. Know, then they're really aware of it, which is great. Yeah. You know. Oh. Okay. So I once again want to thank you so much for spending the time with us. I know you're very busy. And I wanted to tell you that I am so appreciative of everything that the coalition does. Oh, for everyone. Thank you. Well, we're thrilled yeah. to have such an so amazing great. community that lets us do so yeah. much. No, it's so, so wonderful. So yeah. thank you so much for watching Stephanie Reed and here with Jean Liston, who is the Executive Director of the um, Hunger Coalition. And this is the Voices and Views. Have a great day.